It's wine adjacent Wednesday. It's not wine, but it is chug. Well, it's not chuggable. Let's call it whiskey Wednesday. I don't wanna. All right. I like wine adjacent Wednesday. <laughs> it is whiskey Wednesday. That is actually what's happening. But here I am trying to be bossy. Um, You're succeeding wildly. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, back to the back to the thing. Um, we got an email a couple weeks ago. Every once in a while, um, the way we buy usually happens behind the scenes with Matt Caputo. And we'll get an email when there's like new products and Matt will give us notes on things that we should be really excited about and things that we need to try. And this was on a very recent email. And the Matt Caputo said, these are the best cookies we've ever carried. Those of you that remember Nuvoloti, they are better than that. If you are a Nuvoloti lover, um, I share your pain. Nuvoloti were the thing that got me through college and made me a kinder person circa 2000. 2012 and then I turned into a monster and it's because of those cookies um, so when Matt said that I I always believe Matt Caputo but I didn't believe that they would be better than Nuvoloti and they absolutely are and this is what they are and holy shit you guys they're so good beep, 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 beep. censor me I dare you um, but they're that good so these are really really simple very humble looking cookies made from IGP hazelnuts from Piemonte, Tonda Gentile de la Longa. We carry them, they're fantastic, but it takes all of like the beauty and complexity of the best hazelnut in the world and makes it pastry with a lot of butter, some flour, um, very, very simple ingredients so that the hazelnut still gets to shine. And that's why it is in fact the best cookie we've ever had in this store. Um, I will box anybody and defend Mac Caputo's honor if anybody wants to touch toes um, what do you think, Senor? Uh, I think they're pretty extraordinary. I went on a little walk down memory lane, Proust with the Madeleines, uh, mm. uh, the cookies and milk moments in my life, because I always preach that when it comes to food and wine pairing. It's not that complicated. Uh, you recognize when two things taste good together. You've been doing it since, we, we've all been doing it since we were little kids. We've been dunking cookies and milk, and well, I just thought of a really adult pornographically delicious dunk of cookie and milk. Big dip and energy, everybody. It was insane. I hated you for a little bit last week. I want you to be aware of that. I really, really hated you for I'm a minute. I'm not sorry. You ever heard the old saying, uh, one's too many and three's not enough? That's where I went with this box. I literally was pouring this into a breakfast cereal bowl and dousing it with whiskey and making a really delicious mash. However, the whiskey's the thing. Um, I'm going to get on my soapbox for just a second about the corporatization of American whiskey when 90% of what's on the shelves comes from three different places. So we get it in our head that uh, all bourbon should taste like buffalo schmace or, uh, you know, all whiskey should taste like this baseline corporate monstrosity that literally has no signature other than the fact it's brown boozy water. And it sort of takes away the notion that there's a distiller out there who's an artisan, who's using regional grains, who's using high quality grains, who's cooking it up in house from, from stem to stern, distilling in house with in big French pot, copper pot stills. Such a, such a creature is Ransom in the small town of Sheridan, Oregon. I met founder Tad Seastad some years ago and was bowled over by his skill with both grape and grain. Yes, he does make wine, or he did, and he did also makes spirits, and he made probably the best grape on the planet, but I digress. This is the most award-winning whiskey of the last 10 years by anyone. Best American mash bill at the International Distiller Spirits Competition. It's small producer, it's small producer priced. It's made from rye, barley, and wheat. So spice from rye, uh, sweetness from the malted barley, and softness for the wheat. It is a whiskey to me that defies description. And when it makes me think about my dearly departed father pouring one maple syrup on his Wheaties when I smell it, I know I've hit a home run because whiskey should taste like grain. It should taste like the sh it was made out of. Not the wood barrel it rested in, not the wood barrel it was treated in. Wood ought to be a frame and not a picture, as I'm fond of saying. And nowhere has a grain-centric whiskey been more prominent than this one. This one literally smells like maple syrup, chocolate, hazelnuts. It's delicious, and you probably walk right by it in the wine store looking for your favorite corporate shitty whiskey. Pardon my French. But this with this was a magic combination i was dunking and dunking and dunking and i had big dip energy and it was magic needless to say the box of cookies i was sent home with to test and run through the thunderdome experiment uh didn't last long 
Anyway, damn delicious. This is a big one. This just feels luxurious and decadent and all the mm. things you deserve. Now that it's cold, we want to sit by fireplaces and eat and drink things that make us feel warm and cozy and loved. And we love you a lot and you deserve this. And that's all there is. And I'm going to go eat all of these cookies. So leave me. S spoil yourself. Drink better whiskey. Think about what you're doing. You Stop the bad stuff. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's eat stuff. Yeah, we got to go. Dip away, y'all. <laughs>